Lesson 4.1.4 can be factored further. So in this lesson, we're talking about how we can factor completely. So we're going to look at like more difficult quadratics where we're going to want to factor out a common factor first and then use a factor, and then you use our factoring method. So let's do a couple examples first. So this is a little review. Remember, now we're doing the big X method to go it's a little faster. We're going to use our shortcut. So we're going to multiply those two together, 9a and c, to get 36. And then the middle term always goes down here. And we want to find two things that multiply to get 36, but add to get negative 12. Keep in mind when the top right here is positive, that means they're both the same. Right? It's either be both plus or both minus. Now we still look at the factor of 36. So if you're not sure you could always just list them out, I do this because I'm teaching you know how to do this though. So it's like negative 2 and 36, right? Negative 1, well, negative 2 and 18, negative 1 and 36, negative 9 and 4, or negative 4, negative 6 and 6. Right? You just go down the line, negative 3 and 12. Right, but I need the ones that add up to be negative 12, and that is negative 6 and 6. Remember, the trick is now we just divide that by a, so whatever a is, and then we reduce. I can divide these both by 3, and I get negative 2 thirds. I get negative 2 thirds. And remember, general, the general rule here is the bottom one goes in front, this goes with the bottom ones go with the x. So it's going to be 3x minus 2 and 3x minus 2. So there we go. Now this one, same concept. Let's multiply these two together first. I get 18n squared. Sorry, I don't need, I don't need to write the n squared. We know where it goes, so let's write 18. On the bottom, we're going to write 9. Now I need two things that multiply to get 18, but add again 9. 6 and 3 is right? 3 times 6 is 18. 3 plus, 3 plus 6 is 9. So we're going to, we'll put this over the 3, reduce if you can, this gets me 2, this gets me 1, so it's going to be over 1, you can reduce like that, so it's going to be 1x plus 2, and 1x plus 1. Now you should, be, you should notice something here, that does not get me 3n squared plus 9, and well, I should put the end, that does not give me that, like here it does, if you multiply it out, you get the right answer, here it doesn't, there's an issue with this one. And even if we did the area model instead, let's see, I have it written here somewhere. Let me erase some of this. Do the area model. And if we do the area model, so like if I broke it to 6 and 3, and if I did the same thing, but we did the area model way, right, and I wrote this like that. Now we could do the area model, and we get 3n, 3, that'll make this n, n2. So 3n plus 3, n plus 2. So it would work the area model. So that would work out. But this will be something fishing. We'll talk about it. So the next question. Is there more than one way to factor this? Why or why not? And there is. So I did it this way, right? So I have 3n plus 3, and n plus 2. But what if I went here, and I, instead of doing that, what if I went, these have a 3n. Like right here, right up and down is 3, and I put the n right there instead. Then this would have to be 6, and this would have to be 1. I can also factor that way. There's more than one way to factor that. Why is this happening? Because these have a common factor. That's also why when we did the shortcut method, when we did the shortcut method, right, I had n plus 2 n plus 1. Right, so I got three different answers based on how you do it. So right here it asks, why does 3n squared plus 9n plus 6 has more than one factor form? Right, we had three. While the other quadratics we did only had one. Like this one has one answer. That's the answer. Over here we have three different ones. What's different about it? What's different about it is that this has a common factor. If you look at these, I could, I could factor out a 3 from all of them, right? 3n squared plus 9n plus 6, they all divide by 3. So if, if you factor out the common factor, then you get this. And that's always going to be our first step. We always want to factor out the common factor, and then you can factor it like normal. And that's actually what the shortcut method got you. It factored this side like normal, and got that. It just got rid of the common factor. These, you can factor out, you can factor out 3 from this one, and you get 3n plus 1 times n plus 2. So it's really, we should get the same answer. It's just, if you don't factor out the common factor, it, it kind of makes it go kind of haywire. So step one is always factor out the common factor if they have one. So look at it, it could be all be divided by something first and factor it out. 
So look, with this, we're not going to factor these all the way. I just want to see, do they have a common factor or Chanel? So look at here. Everything can be divided by 2. So yes, this has a common factor. I'm going to start off this way. Whoops. Let's do the math correctly. So we won't factor this anymore, but like that'll be the first step, and then we'll factor this doing the big X. This one, look at they all have a five in common, so you can factor out the five. Like that. Over here, they don't have anything in common. And over here, nothing in common also. Now we could probably still factor these, but we just want to know: should we should we factor out the common factor first, right? It's just if I don't if I don't do that, it's going to be it might have more than one solution. So that's all this is about. Just could they do they have something in common that you could factor out? And that's always going to be our step one. First, see if they have something in common, factor out like like we did in these two, and then you would factor some more. Factoring completely in part C of problem four, you should have noticed that each term in twelve t minus ten t plus two is divisible by two. Each term has a common factor of two. Yeah, we did that, right? Each term has a common factor of two. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna factor completely. So he wants to take the next one and rewrite it. So this term here, we actually we actually did that earlier. We want to rewrite this so we can factor it. So if you look at this one, they all have a common factor of five. So you can pull out the five. Right? If you're not sure how a common factor works, all you do is divide each thing by the thing you pull out. So I'm bring out the five. I'm gonna divide each one by five, so it becomes two x squared plus 5x minus 3. So that's it rewritten in factored form, like what the common factor pulled out. And now we got to factor this completely. So all we're going to do is factor this portion by itself. So we're going to do the big X. All right, we multiply A times C. So 2x times negative, times negative 3 is negative 6. And then 5 in the bottom. Now keep in mind this one, it's a negative here, so that, that tells you it has to be different signs, right? Anytime it's a negative, different signs. And I need two things that multiply to get negative six, bad to get five. Or if you're not sure, you feel free to write them all out. Like you get negative one and six, negative six and one, negative two and three, negative three and two. And then I need to get five, so that is negative one and six. And then remember, we're gonna divide them by the A, which is right here. Reduce if you can, so this is I can't do anything with negative one half, but this side I could get three over one. So remember the way we write it? It is always that's in the front, that's by the x. So two x minus one. And then on this one, right, the one's in front, so one x plus three. But don't forget the five that we factored out earlier, that's also part of it. So like this. So that's how you factor completely. Factor out the common term first, then factor like you normally do, and then don't forget the common term when you write out the complete factored. But there we go. One last bit here. Let's factor each of the following expressions completely. I'm just gonna do the first one. We'll do the other one in class. So look at this first one, it's a little tough, right? X squared y minus three xy minus ten y. That's complicated. What do you notice they all have in common though? They all have a y, so we could factor it out. So you pull out the y. Right, you divide everything by y, the y's cancel, you just get x squared minus 3x minus 10. Remember, if you're not sure how I get that, all you have to do is divide each term by the thing you pulled out. And in each one of these cases, the y's canceled. So I get that. Now we still got to factor this. So let's do big X. We'll apply the first term and last term, negative 10, negative 3. I need two things that multiply to get negative 10, but I have to get negative 3. Remember, it's a negative, so it should be different signs. And it looks like five and two. Now, if you're trying to figure out which one of these is negative, always look at the bigger number. The bigger number is the, should be the same sign as the thing in the bottom. So these should both be negative. The bigger number always matches the sign of, of like five and two should always match the sign on the bottom. Because when you add it, it cancels out. Now remember, we're going to divide these by the a. In this case, a is just one. So we get one x minus five and 1x plus 2. Now remember, you don't have to write the 1. You can just write x minus 5 and x minus x plus 2. And then don't forget the thing we pulled at the very beginning, y. And that's the lesson.